WCCF Tech reporting on the 7900 XT RDNA 3 after I drink a sip of my coffee that I'm holding very close to my mouth. Bam! AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT graphics card based on the RDNA 3 Navi 31 GPU is going to be the next gen flagship for the red team, ushering in performance levels never before seen in the PC gaming segment. And here's everything from specs, price, and performance that you need to know. The RX 6000 RDNA 2 graphics card proved that the red team can offer performance on par and even exceed that of the competing RTX lineup. Each segment saw a massive increase in performance, but the Navi 21 series was where the real action was, with performance higher than the RTX 3090 Ti across the board. AMD not just delivered a brand new GPU package to its gaming audience, but a package that was uplifted with a wide variety of architectural and software innovations such as Infinity Cache Tech, FSR, and Smart Access Memory. All of these features combined to give Radeon users a fluid and smooth gaming experience while enjoying all the benefits that modern day games have to offer such as ray tracing, DirectX 12 Ultimate, and visual upscalers. We should expect similar things with the next generation flagship too, but an important factor to consider is that the GPUs are becoming more power hungry and more pricey. It is a trend that might continue into the future as we get better products, but in return, there's always a cost to pay for the end consumers. So starting with what we know so far, first we would like to take a look at the brand new RDNA 3 GPU core that is expected to debut in the next gen Radeon RX 7000 series graphics card lineup. At the top of the RDNA 3 SKU lineup is the Navi 31 GPU. Although there's an even faster chip in the works that is expected to debut next year, the 2022 flagship is said to be based on the Navi 31 GPU. The AMD RDNA 3 GPUs will be part of the GFX 11 family, and the flagship Navi 31 GPU is internally codenamed Plum Bonito, whereas the RDNA 2 flagship, the Navi 21 GPU, was internally known as the Siena cichlid there we go uh amd has become quite fond of using fish names as its internal code names for the gaming gpu lineup and that's expected to continue with the rdna3 lineup amd confirmed that its rdna3 gpus will be coming later this year with a huge performance uplift the company's senior vice president of engineering radeon technologies group david wang said that the next gen GPUs for R or RX 7000 series will offer over 50% performance per watt uplift, uplift versus the existing RDNA 2 GPUs. Some of the key features of the RDNA 3 GPUs highlighted by AMD will include a five nanometer process node, advanced chiplet packaging, re-architected compute unit, optimized graphics pipeline, next gen AMD Infinity Cache, and a greater than 50% performance per watt versus RDNA too. In the information published by AMD, the company highlighted a few key features of its RDNA 3 GPUs that will power the next generation of Radeon RX graphics cards. The RDNA 3 GPU will be based on a 5 nanometer process node and utilize an advanced chiplet packaging that delivers increased performance per watt. Furthermore, the GPU will house a range of new technologies such as a brand new and re-architected compute unit, an optimized graphics pipeline, and the next gen of Infinity Cache. AMD will be re-architecting the compute units with RDNA 3 to deliver enhanced ray tracing capabilities, although there's no mention of what these capabilities are. If we were to guess, we would say it's definitely talking about performance and a set of advanced features on the RDNA 3 GPU core for the RX 7000 series graphics card. AMD's RDNA 2 GPU powered RX 6000 series were the first to feature ray tracing capabilities on the Red Camp. They were a generation behind Nvidia who introduced their first ray tracing GPUs two years prior on the Turing graphics architecture and fine tuned it further to deliver better performance in the second generation on Ampere. With RDNA 3 GPU powered RX 7000 series pitted for its launch later this year, we can expect AMD to offer a similar jump in performance or even exceed Ampere's ray tracing capabilities. But the real challenge ahead would be to rival NVIDIA's third gen ray tracing cores, which are expected to debut on the Ada Lovelace powered 40 series. 
Besides ray tracing, AMD will also be adding an optimized graphics pipeline for RDNA 3 GPUs, will allow for even higher clock speeds than RDNA 2 GPUs. The AMD RX 6000 cards already run close to 3 GHz, so with an improved 5 nanometer process node, we can expect AMD to breach past the 3 GHz clock limit. This is essential for AMD as their competitor isn't holding back either with the 40 series rumors also hinting at up to 3 GHz clock speeds utilizing the more efficient 4 nanometer optimized 5 nanometer process node. In addition to these, AMD will be leveraging advanced GPU capabilities of its RDNA 3 graphics architecture to deliver a richer software ecosystem such as support for AV1 and brand new WMMA instructions, which will allow AI learning through the assistance of dedicated hardware blocks. The company is expected to debut its next-gen FSR 3.0 technology with RDNA 3 GPUs, which will tackle NVIDIA's AI-assisted DLSS feature suite. The GPUs will also be amongst the first to utilize the brand new Gen 5 protocol, PCIe Gen 5 protocol, allowing for up to 128 gigabytes per second transfer rates. This will be crucial step in enhancing the smart access memory. One second, guys. Boom. All right which is a brand new feature designed in compliance with Microsoft's direct storage API to deliver faster loading times and better texture streaming in game. Display capabilities such as DisplayPort 2.0 and HDMI 2.0 will also be present on the new graphics card. So here we have some of the generational comparisons between Navi 10, 21 and, and 31. If we scroll down, we're really looking for the memory bus and it looks like it's now getting reported as 256 bit. I was hoping for that 384 bit um, and that is GDDR6. So if this is true and we've gotten that update, we are getting a downgrade in the memory bus width, which could be disappointing from a mining perspective. The Navi 31 GPU, the flagship RDNA 3 chip would power the next gen enthusiast cards such as the Radeon 7900 XT graphics card, we have heard that AMD will drop compute units in favor of work group processors on its next gen RDNA 3 GPUs. Each work group will house dual compute units, but with twice the SIM32 SIM D32 clusters as opposed to just two on each compute unit with RDNA 2. Rumors are that AMD has the option to select between Samsung and TSMC for the 6 nanometer die. According to the latest information, the thir Navi 31 GPU with RDNA 3 architecture is expected to offer a single GCD with 48 work group processors, 12 SAs, and 6 SEs. This will give out a total of 12,288 stream processors, which is lower than the previous count. This will also drop the overall compute performance unless AMD goes crazy with over 3 GHz clock frequencies on its flagship part, which I think we're expecting. The Navi 31 GPU will also carry 6 MCDs, which will feature 64 megabytes of Infinity Cache per die and are also likely to carry 64-bit memory controllers that will provide the chip with a 384-bit bus interface. See, so there we're getting reports of the 384-bit bus again. As for clock speeds, the AMD Navi 31 GPU is said to offer clock speeds that can hit over 3 GHz. NVIDIA's flagship GPUs are also said to offer close to 2.8 GHz clock speeds, but AMD had, has had a clear advantage in clock speeds over NVIDIA during the past generation, so it's expected to continue. A 3 GHz clock speed means that we can expect over 75 teraflops of FP32 performance on the new flagship, which will be a 2.3 times increase over the current 6950 XT. Now, this is going to result in higher power draw, and AMD seems to have confirmed that this uh, much, uh, that their next generation graphics card lineup will feature higher power consumption, but they will still be more efficient options than what NVIDIA has to offer. The AMD 6950 XT already has a total board power of 335 watts, so for a greater than two times performance gain, we can expect a final total board power for the rating on our X7900 XT to end up close to 400 to 450 watts. 
To cool such a thing, a really high-end cooler will be required. A while ago, Moore's Law's dad shared what seems to be the first look at the high-end AMD Navi 31 and 32 GPUs with the MCM design and the respective RX 7000 series graphics card, which are seemingly going to feature high-end liquid cooling designs out of the box. The card renderer shows it's a dual 8-pin design with a dual slot design and a 120mm AIO cooling solution. Here you go dual eight pin so that's nice to see um won't have to upgrade to presumably potentially not have to upgrade to atx 3.0 and the uh, gen 5 connectors navi 31 mcds will be linked to a single gcd via a next generation infinity fabric interconnect and feature 256 to 384 megabytes of infinity cache Considering the latest memory design, next generation Navi 31 GPUs can be equipped with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, the same memory capacity as the upcoming and existing flagship from the 3090 and 4090. The newer memory spec can be seen as a reduction over the previously rumored 32 gigabyte memory, but it's definitely going to help tone down the pricing of the card. As for performance of these monstrous GPUs, we can only use theoretical numbers here since the launch is a bit far away, but based on what we know from the expected theoretical compute numbers, the performance is going to see over 2.3 times gain over the existing cards. This is a major leap. Based on the theoretical clock speed of 3 gigahertz, you get up to 76 teraflops of compute performance, and the rumors are suggesting even higher boost clocks. But one should keep in mind that compute performance doesn't necessarily indicate the overall gaming performance, but, but, but despite that, it will be a huge upgrade for gaming PCs and a 6.2 times increase over the current fastest console, the Series X. This will be over two times the compute performance uplift for each graphics card versus its predecessor, and this is without even factoring in the brand new architectural features that are expected to bring major lifts to in their respective department. Now, flops aren't necessarily a reflective or necessarily reflective of the graphics or gaming performance, but they do provide a metric that can be used for comparison. A two to two and a half times gain over the 6900 XT and 6800 XT would be huge for AMD and is definitely going to be required if they are going to tackle the likes of Nvidia's RTX 40 series. Gamers should expect fluid 4K gaming to be buttery smooth on these graphics cards and with the Fidelity FX suite offering next-gen FSR, SAS, and SAM support, we might even see playable 60 FPS at 8K resolutions. Wow. The AMD 7000 series graphics cards will be focusing on the high-end variants first with the likes of the Navi 31 and 32 and 33 GPUs. Previous rumors had mentioned 33 to be followed by Navi 31, then Navi 32 based GPU graphics cards, but the leaker had earlier pointed out that those plans were no longer applicable. We don't know which GPUs will hit the market first, but AMD is likely to unveil its Navi 33 and 31 variants first. As for the launch, the cards are either expected in late October or mid-November, which means a Q4 2022 launch. This will be similar time frame as the AMD Ryzen 7000 Zen 4 desktop CPUs, which will also be launching in fall of 2022. Furthermore, NVIDIA is aiming for a Q4 2022 launch, and that's not all. Even Intel is planning a Q4 2022 launch for its very own 13th gen Raptor Lake CPU family. So in total, we are looking at four major desktop PC launches later this fall, which means it's going to be one heated Q4 for this time around, but consumers are in for a treat as they will have lots of tech to choose from for their next gen gaming PC builds. As for pricing, we will have seen AMD breaching past the thousand dollar US figure for its current 6950 XT flagship, so that might be a hint at things to come. Realistically, AMD prices its flagship around a thousand US mark, but it also comes with some major affordable options in the 600 to 800 dollar US segment. The Navi 31 is currently only expected to include one graphics card, but if the company plans on doing a duo or trio launch like the previous flagship chips, then we can also expect a 699 dollar US solution. 
So there is everything that we know so far about the RX 7000 series GPU lineup. I'm not clear on if we are getting a 384 bit bus or a 256 bit bus at this time. Maybe you guys can help me out in chat or down in the comment section below and we'll get verification on that obviously as we get closer to the release times. For mining, we hope that we see a 384 bit bus for that memory performance or and and or if we could also see some sort of correlation between the infinity cache technology and mining or a particular algorithm that would be awesome too thanks for checking out this clip from the crypto mining show you can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here also i'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.